Throughout much of his campaign for president, Joe Biden has thrived off of support from black voters. He was grateful to the black voters in South Carolina that essentially resurrected his campaign during the 2020 Democratic primaries. And it was black voter turnout both in person and via absentee ballots in states like Georgia and Michigan and Pennsylvania that helped edge him over the top in the general election. Then President elect Biden thanked black voters and credited them for his win, promising to do right by them during his presidency. Well, it seems as if black folks are still waiting for our just dues. Talks on moving the George Floyd Policing Act have stalled, and progress on voting rights is a bust after Democrats fail to secure enough votes to stop the filibuster. A recent poll from Hit Strategies serves as a warning to the Biden administration and congressional Democrats to step up their game if they want black support. For more on this, I want to bring in Terrence Woodbury. He is a Democratic pollster and partner at Hit Strategies. Terrence, always good to have you here on Amplified. I want to start off with the, the basics of your findings. Now, black voter approval ratings for Democratic leaders has seen a steady decline over the last couple of months. President Biden's rating went down 9%, and Vice President Harris's rating is down 4%. And to no one's surprise, congressional Democrats are down 12%. So tell us more about the findings and what message you think it sends to the folks at the top. Thank you so much for having me on, Aisha. And you're right, this is a warning. This is a warning call to the, to the Biden administration and Democrats from black voters who are acutely aware of the role that they played delivering the, delivering the United States Senate, United States Congress, and the White House to Democrats. But along with that awareness comes a level of expectation. Black voters expect progress on the issues that are most important to them, issues like racism and discrimination, uh, economic opportunity, closing the wealth gap. And, and the challenge that we're seeing here is, is both a governing and a messaging problem that, in fact, the Biden administration has made significant progress on these issues, but has proven either incapable or unwilling to take the victory lap to show black voters how they have made their lives better. And that is leading to a, a lack, a, a decline in morale and a precipitous decline in support that is, that is, a, that is going to be problematic in a midterm election where, Joe Bi where the Democrats that will be on the ballot are inextricably tied to Joe Biden's approval and where, and, and, and where black voter support is, is the only path to victory. For many mm. Democrats in battleground districts. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think your perspective is interesting here on this messaging stuff because a, a lot of the promises made to the black community, such as voting rights and addressing police brutality, have in fact been deflated. Um, and, and so I'm hearing you say that there actually are some accomplishments, there's some progress, and that part of the challenge is the, um, the, the, the timidness maybe in taking a victory lap. Say more about that. That's exactly right, Aisha. So I'm, I actually have an op-ed coming out this week that talks about how it started and how it's going. And, and it, you know, we started off, I, I described the 2020 election as, uh, as both pain and power of, the, of black voters, that there, were, there was a significant uh, levels of pain from COVID-19 where black voters were 37% more likely to die from COVID. Well, Joe Biden has all but eliminated that, uh, that 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 uh, infection and death gap amongst black voters. You know, it, it, when it started, uh, uh, Black Lives Matter was classified as a terrorist organization. Well, today the Proud Boys are a terrorist organization, and the Oath Keepers are being uh, indicted on on sedition charges. When it started, uh, uh, Flint had been had had been suffering with lead water pipes under three presidents, under George Bush, Barack Obama, and Donald Trump. We're all aware of the lead pipes in, in Flint, Michigan. Well, Joe Biden has, has now signed a bill that allocates $45 billion to replace every lead pipe in America, including Flint, Michigan. On many, even on issues of police and uh, on police reform and justice, when it started, millions of young people and people of color were protesting in the streets, demanding for police reform. 
And while the legislation has, while the George Floyd Police Reform Act has been stalled by Republicans in Congress, Joe Biden's administration and Merrick Garland's Justice Department has banned chokeholds for federal officers, has banned no-knock warrant, warrants, and Joe Biden is prepared to announce an aggressive um, uh, executive order on, on, on police reform in the next couple of weeks. And so progress is being mm. made, but it doesn't matter if they refuse mm. to talk about it. It mm. doesn't matter if they don't go yeah. into these communities and tell them how they are making their lives better. You know, the complete incongruence here of the facts that you just laid out and the reality of what's happening in the bureaucratic process and the impact that's having and what people are thinking and feeling and the reception is so huge here. I mean, you know, for, for the last couple of decades, black folks have overwhelmingly voted for the Democratic Party because the party tends to support the issues that we actually uh, care about. But it seems to me that, you know, what you found in your poll, at least, um, that's not what people are feeling. Feeling, right? They're not feeling that they're actually being uh, supported. So I want to walk through um, some of this data uh, that you have here. You see we have here on the screen. Um, yep. Democrats take black voters for granted. 8%. That's, got, that's gone up 8% since June of 2021. Despite that, black people are still planning to vote in the 2022 midterms, though. So why do you think the black people, one, are putting their faith in a party that they don't feel has delivered for them, despite what you say? And do you think that the turnout is really going to reflect what you're seeing in your poll? I am very concerned about uh, about declines in turnout uh, and and about you know declines in morale. A lot of the voters, uh, you know, Joe Biden's path to victory in 2020 required us to achieve historic numbers amongst Black voters. I mean, in Georgia, Black seniors had surpassed their 2016 turnout before Election Day. Uh, we saw young young Black voters doubling their uh, their voter registration. Uh, in, in cities like Detroit and in Philadelphia. And so, uh, though, you know, th these younger and more diverse voters are also the most likely to drop off between presidential and midterm elections. And so the drop in morale, the drop in confidence, the crisis of confidence that progress is being made is very concerning to the, to the turnout required uh, uh, in, in 2022. In fact, if we just look back to 2021, where, Terry, where uh, Glenn Youngkin turned out 90% of Donald Trump voters uh, in, in, in Virginia, and Terry McCullough turned out just 72% of Joe Biden voters in Virginia. That is the risk of decline amongst, uh, uh, amongst some of these mm -hmm. surge voters in, mm -hmm. the, in, in the younger and black communities. And so they, Democrats have Terrence, work to do. They, they, uh, Terrence... I only have one minute left, so I want you to comment on this. This uh, enthusiasm gap that we're talking about isn't just about black folks and if black folks are going to show up at the polls. We actually need white voters to show up at the polls in order to okay. elect Democrats and advance our agenda, right? And what your research found is that white people are really tepid about Democrats, too. Tell us what you found and, and, and what you expect to see play out. That's exactly right, Aisha. And this is what we 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 we, we try to Im impose upon our democratic I'm sorry, de democratic clients is that issues of race and justice are not just uh, exclusive to Black voters anymore. In the summer of 2020, we saw the pro the complexion of the protest change. 52 percent of protesters were white. The majority of Black mm. of, of protesters. Uh, for police reform in the summer of 2020 were white, but 80% of them were under the age of 40. This is a... Mm. Democrats now have to appeal to a, 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 a diverse coalition of young voters and people of color that are all demanding for justice and, and reform here yeah. and, and, and accept the fact that these are no longer just exclusively black issues. And the folks that he's talking about are the new American majority of voters who are That's the right. majority in this country. Terrence Woodbury of Hit Strategies, thanks so much for being here. Always a pleasure to talk to you about the issues and your polling data.